Did you bring a Bible today? Let's go through it. Let's go through it. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I call this the revelation of apostasy. We are becoming an Ichabod nation. You know what that means? Ichabod means the glory has departed. We call the flag, what do we call that? Glory. Old glory. And uh, I despise anyone not honoring that flag. Amen. That flag covers the coffins of every man that we send to battle to fight for this country. That flag stands for freedom for everybody, white, black, brown, yellow, red, doesn't matter. It is freedom for everybody. Amen? The Bible and Jesus Christ gave us that liberty. And we're taking people, I won't say all of us, but people in this country are taking that liberty and using it as a license to try and destroy the very foundation of our liberties, the Bible and our Constitution. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're the mayor of a town, when you're sworn in, you swear an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States of America. Am I right on that? How dare the mayor of Seattle, the people who went in, took over the heart of the town, a liberal town to begin with. I've been there. Don't want to go back. But I like the weather. The people who took over the center of that town, who have stolen, looted, raped, murdered, shut down businesses inside the heart of that town. The mayor of Seattle called them patriots. That sickens me. That angers me. Some people might ask, why is this going on? Why is this, why is this being allowed to take place? Why isn't the president doing something about it? Or why doesn't God do something about it? I'll tell you why. Let me read the scripture, 2 Thessalonians 2, follow along with me. Verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that to be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Do you believe that? Say amen. amen. I can't wait for him to come. Can't wait. But I'm going to have to. Here's what I believe. Verse 3. God changed my mind about this years ago by reading this passage. Before we get out of here, I believe God has to manifest sin for what it really is. You listen to this. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come. Read this out loud with me. A falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Do you know? Do you see what I see? God is going to allow the man of sin, the son of perdition, the one who says, I'm God, who sits in the seat of God, showing himself that he is God. God is going to allow him to be manifested. He is, he's called the man of sin because what he represents is the fruition of every man's wickedness. It has to come 
to a head. In other words. So look in verse 4. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know. Now you know what withholdeth. Why is God holding back? Why is God not doing something? Why did God, is God letting it go as far as it's going? For that matter, why is the president allowing it to go? I believe the president wants this country to see what the Democrat Party is really all about and has been for years. My grandpa was a Democrat and my daddy was a Democrat. Until, and I'll never forget the day that my dad realized that the Democrat congressman that he had voted for for years, Richard Gebhardt, was pro-abortion and pro-sodomite. And my dad said, I'll never vote for the man again. <laughs> See, my dad came from the South. Down in the South, they're all Democrats. They were all Southern Democrats, they called them, Union Democrats. And at one time, maybe, maybe, that party stood for something. What it has been forced into now, God is showing the evil. And it's not just the Democrats, it's some of the Republicans too. Mitt Romney's one of them. And if you remember back, we didn't have much of a choice between Mitt Romney and Barack Obama as far as running for president. You get one, you get the other practically. So, look at, look at your Bible again. Verse 6, And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. See, it was already working in Paul's day, and it's working now. The mystery of iniquity. Who's on God's side? Who isn't? What church is right? What church is no longer right? There was a time when you couldn't tell. But now, it's pretty easy, isn't it? When you walk into a church and the church starts embracing open sodomy, open fornication, you know that ain't right. And you go, I'm not going to this church. This is not the house of God. Amen? See, God has to let it rise. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that... What, notice what he calls him. That wicked. Not that wicked one or that wicked person or that wicked man. But that wicked. What he's saying here is that he is the fruition of every man's wickedness. That wicked shall be revealed. And I believe we're seeing it right now in this country. Whom the Lord, watch this, God's still in charge. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. You know what the spirit of his mouth is? Amen. The very book that they've despised is the spirit of God's mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him his coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. How dare they call him Reverend Sharpton. Reverend Jackson. How dare they take that title. When they know nothing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. They despise it. And with all deceivableness and Rick Warren. Same thing. I'll preach against them all. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Turn to Matthew chapter 13. And I want you to look on the screen for a minute. Matthew 13, I'm going to let you get there. We'll go to prayer. Listen, I love you. I love this church. I love everybody in it. Right is right and wrong is wrong. It has to be preached on. 
Why is God allowing this? Why is God allowing the wickedness? And to my knowledge, most of Antifa is white. And they have been declared, rightfully so, a terrorist organization operating in this country. They knew that they could not invade America. So the decision was to infiltrate America. And that's what's happening. What do you see up on the screen? Bread. That was easy. All right, let's move on. Let's go to prayer. Father, I ask for your help. I ask for guidance. I ask for clarity. I ask, dear God, for truth. Truth without apology, but truth in love. I love the people that are sitting in this room. I love them with all my heart. And I would give my life for each and every one of them. I have given my life for them. I am their servant. I'm at their disposal. I serve out of a willing heart the sheep that you've sent into this room today. And all of those, Father, that you've sent online. And I pray, dear God, that you'd bless them through your word. Give us understanding. Give us understanding of what's going on in our country. What's going on. There's something ain't right. There's a spirit involved. A very evil presence in our nation. It's been here for years. And it's been growing. And now it's gaining prominence. And people's eyes are being opened. And they're seeing the evil that exists in this country. And God helped the blind in this nation who refuse to see the evil open our eyes that we can see give us vision through your word give us understanding and help us dear God to stand firm and not be afraid bless your word we pray in Jesus name and all God's people said amen Back in Matthew chapter 13, look at verse 10. Do you believe God wants you to have light and understanding? Do you believe God's got a plan? Do you trust it? You should. Because what else do we have? What else do we have? If we don't trust God with what he's going to do believe me he is in charge he is in charge let me show you Matthew 13 verse 10 Matthew 13 one of my favorites become one of my favorite chapters it is full of parables but parables that run deep and they explain things that maybe we've questioned all of our lives and here in Matthew chapter 13 verse 10 the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries. Remember what we read earlier in 2 Thessalonians, now the mystery of iniquity? Do you think God wants us to understand what that is? Absolutely he does. So watch this. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. See, there's people out there who refuse our Bible. They don't, want any, they don't want any part of it. They will never understand what's going on. You will. You will. You'll be smarter than Alan Dershowitz. You'll be smarter than Joseph Biden. Which won't take much. So he said in verse 12, For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. What he means by that, how many of you have a Bible? You got a Bible? 
To you that hath, you shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore, speak out of them in parables. Because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross. What that means, gross, doesn't mean disgusting. It means large. They've grown in pride of themselves. And their ears are dull of hearing, and their ears have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. If you have been converted, tell God thank you that He converted you, that He opened your eyes. Now let me ask you a question. When you got saved, were you at your worst when you got saved. Who was, who was at the end, absolute end of their rope when they asked Jesus into their heart? Raise your hand. You couldn't take another. Here's my point. When God saved you, you were not at the beginning of your life of sin. Because the beginning of sin, there's enjoyment in it. If sin wasn't fun, we wouldn't do it. Oh, you mean I got to take that drug again? I hate that. See, nobody ever says that. They say, give me some more of that. Right? It was at the end of your life of sin when God manifested to you what sin has been doing to you all this time. That's when he converted you. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Do you not see that now? It had to blossom. It had to bear fruit. It had to show you the reality of what sin does to a person, to a marriage, to your children. God had to show you all that. So, verse 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see. Now I want you to pay attention to this. Act like Jesus is saying this to you right this minute. And here you are looking at the rioting and the looting and the pillaging and the taking over of cities and saying to the police, we don't want you anymore. We want to be lawless. We want to rule our own. We don't, we don't want laws and rules to govern this country anymore. You're seeing this. Blessed are you because you get to see this for what it really is. Verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Consider yourself blessed for living in such a time. Now I know that may seem hard. Because I'm going to say this again. The devil's not done. What we saw with the virus. And then now what we see with the riots. There is something far worse coming down the road. Before November the 3rd. I'm not a prophet. I've not had a dream or a vision. I've not had secret intelligence to tell me that. I just know the devil. And I know that he hates churches like this one. How many of y'all know that? So look up on the screen. You have two types of bread. One of them 
does not have leaven in it, which one? And see how obvious that, see how easy that was? One of them is leavened and one of them is not. And it's easy to tell, isn't it? Because what did the Bible say about leaven? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Now, take your Bible, turn to Matthew 13 again, if you're already there. Look at verse 33. There's one verse, there's a one verse parable here that will absolutely blow you away on what it means. 1333. Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven. Now what do we know about leaven in the Bible? It's a type of false doctrine, it's a type of lies, and it's a type of sin. What does, guys, what does a little lust do in us? You don't have to say it. But it ain't good. Amen? Just a little lust goes a long, long, long way. So does a little lie. Just a little lie. A little pride can turn into a contemptuous heart. Just a little bit. Doesn't take much. So this Bible's right. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is likened to leaven. Now what, here's what he means by this. Which a woman took, and here's the key. She hid it in three measures of meal. Why that number? Because, 1 John 2, 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Three things. Sin is always in these three categories. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Who in here is not ever guilty of any of these? Raise your hand. You know, I believe that. That little boy's cute, and he's, I think he's a good boy. He ain't guilty of them yet. <laughs> Amen, mama. Amen. But it's coming. Now think about this. Think about what, who in here has ever baked a loaf of bread? Who in here has ever baked a loaf of bread? My daddy did it. My daddy got into bread making and I loved it. And I don't know exactly what all he did, but he kneaded the dough. And he would add a packet of Fleischmann's yeast. Just one packet. Put it in the dough. Cover it with a towel. And let it sit. And it would do that. You put it in the oven too soon. It doesn't make good bread. Put it in the oven too late. It won't be good. Put in the oven just right. So now, do you see what God's doing? His kingdom, Milton, is coming. Jesus is coming. He's coming. But not yet. The leaven has not leavened the lump yet. So God is waiting for the lump to be just right. And then he is going to put it in the furnace of fire. So now do you understand what, what's happening? God is exposing evil and corruption for where it is. And those of you who have honest eyes can see it. You can see it in the white politicians and the white preachers and you can see it in the black politicians and the black preachers and you can see it in the red politicians and the red preachers and everybody else. You can see it. You can see it. Turn to Matthew chapter 7.
I've been studying false prophets for years. Studying their methods. Studying their, how they, how they speak. How they get their, their false doctrines. How they get people to, how in the world do you get somebody to believe that the earth is flat? I did it. I did a radio interview with Tim Barron. Do you remember Tim Barron's, Tim and Al? Did a radio interview with him. He's in Lost Wages, Nevada. And he, he said the topic is, we're going to talk about flat earth. So we did. We talked about flat earth. And he asked me, he said, how do people end up believing this? I said, you got me. But my experience is, once they're talked into it, you almost can't talk them out of it. It's like trying to save a Jehovah's Witness. You just can't do it. The leaven has gotten in them, and it's taken over. Now look at Matthew seven fifteen. Jesus told us, beware of false prophets. By the way, false prophets are not just preachers. They're news media. News media. Politician speeches. Speeches all over. That it's false doctrines and false ideas about what our country really is that's fed into people's minds and they believe it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. So God said, verse 16, How will you know them? You shall know them by their fruits. When the mayor of Seattle calls the rapist patriots, Aah! That's a wolf! Who's been standing as a sheep for years. She's a wolf. And she means to devour innocent people's lives. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather of grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? I don't know trees. I look out here and I see trees out here. I don't know that one from that one. But if I saw an apple on it, Wayne... It's an apple tree. Amen. Amen. If I see an orange, it ain't an apple tree. Right? So if they say what they're saying about Antifa and about the rioters and the looters, calling them heroes, calling them patriots, they're wolves. Don't vote for them again. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. You won't know them until the fruit appears. Then you'll know them. You see what he's saying now? Do you understand why it's happening? God has to manifest their fruit before men's eyes. Before, there are still good people in this country who may not be born again Christians like us, but they still love America. Amen. And they can see evil when they see it. They know it. They can spot it. Doesn't take a genius. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, cast into the fire, wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. God is telling you, the fruit has to be manifested. Now, let's take this now and stick it on each one of you. Is it possible... To come to church every Sunday, every Sunday night, Wednesday night. And be in the literal throes of sin. You better believe it is. There are churches all over this country. They may have a King James Bible. They may be saying the right things. But their people... In the throes of wickedness. 
One man called me a couple years ago. He went to a King James Fundamental Church in Bristol, Tennessee, Bristol, Virginia. It's one city in two states. He found out the pastor was raping his twin nine-year-old daughters on a regular basis, but preaching King James fire and brimstone. God exposed it. And that man, that evil, wicked man, was going to use those girls in court to get a reduced sentence. Now that man says, I'm eternally saved no matter what. I doubt it. By their fruits, ye shall know them. And so anybody from me on down through that camera, you better watch yourself. You better watch yourself. Do you want God exposing you in front of the whole church for who you really are? Do you want that? That would, that would be, no, I don't want that. That may be a little dizzy. Matthew 13, verse 24. Another parable. I got more scripture. Is that all right? I mean, you can go home, listen to Joe Biden's speech if you want. Who in here believes there's going to be a debate? There ain't going to be no debate. They ain't going to listen to Ron. They ain't going to let him out. <laughs> Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now you look at the wisdom of the master here. The wisdom of God. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? And from whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. People, there are enemies in our own country. China's not going to come over here with troops. They don't have to. They've got them hired right here in this country. Do you believe that? You know what they're trying to do to us, Ed? Trying to make me and you hate each other. That hurts me. That hurts me. I love my brothers and my sisters. Doesn't matter what color you are. Doesn't matter what shape your eyes are. They're trying to make us hate each other, Ed. And I don't like that. They know that if they can get us divided, divided we fall. And it's a biblical principle. So he said unto them, an enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, nay, listen to the wisdom. Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Now we're the wheat. We're the wheat. Jesus is going to come gather us up one of these days. Amen? Every nation and kindred and tongue and people is going to be around the throne of Jesus with palms in our hands. Palm branches. You know what that, st that stands for? Tabernacles. They took palm branches and made little booths and set them and, and that represented God dwells with us. I can't wait for Jesus to come and dwell with us. Amen. But it's not time. See, the tares always show their color. The wheat turns golden like the sun when the time of harvest is. But when they're both green, you can't really tell them apart. 
So they have to wait till the harvest. At the harvest, the wheat turns golden like the sun and the tares turn black like sin, like darkness. So then, when the fruit has come out, the, the servants can go, okay, boys, everything that's a tear, you can tell it. Pluck it up, gather it up. We're going to throw it in the fire. We're going to get rid of it. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now look at your Bible. Who gets gathered first? That day shall not come until the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That's what you're looking at right there. So you know what? It does have to get worse. Is God still going to gather us? Better hope in it. You better hope so. And hoping is not wishing. Turn to Jude. Turn to Jude. How many more scriptures I got? One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. Then I'll be done. I don't. All right. Blame Roy. Roy's guarding your car. Don't worry about it. Roy's got. We give him one bullet to use. Okay. He'll make it count. Amen. Jude, look at Jude, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Did not God have to manifest Pharaoh and who he was? Sure he did. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Did not God show who the bad angels were when they came down and made it with human women? Did not God show and reveal who they were? He had to. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to what? You look at your Bible. It isn't just the sin of sodomy that God got them for. It was for their fornication. It was for their lasciviousness, their adulteries, which our nation is full of. And why is God allowing it to happen? He's got to expose sin for what it is. And he said, going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise, look at here, despise what? That's government. They despise government, Cubby. They despise police officers. They say, blank the pigs. Get rid of police. These filthy dreamers defile the flesh and despise dominion. And they speak evil of those who are in charge. Dignities. God has to let it manifest. Turn to 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. Verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. God wants us informed. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. You look at your Bibles. God had to let Korah manifest who Korah really was. God had to let the evil of the Israelites manifest who they really were before He destroyed them. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. What happened to the Israelites when they lusted in the wilderness? God overthrew them and God will do the same thing to us. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day. 23,000 people dropped dead in one day. God manifested that so that the rest of the Israelites said, we're not like that. We're not, we're not doing that, Moses. Moses, have mercy on us. Moses, forgive us. God, ask God to, have, to, to pardon us. Moses, we don't want to go down like they are. Is that not why God does that? Now, look at verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Turn to Ezekiel 9. Let me show you this. And I'm tired as all get out, but 
I think I need to preach this. Ezekiel 9. Look at what God did here. In Ezekiel 8, God took Ezekiel through a little tour of go what's going on inside the temple. And it was nothing but pure evil. Listen to me. The religious people were corrupt as corrupt could be. They were corrupt, Brother George, inside the house of God they were corrupt. And God showed it to Ezekiel. So in chapter 9, he said, He cried also mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause him that have charge of the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. God's fixing to kill a bunch of people. Do you think God has abandoned America? I don't. I think God just might get in a slaughtering mood. So he said, verse 2, Behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lived toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them with, was clothed with linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side. And as they went in, he stood behind, beside the brazen altar, and the glory of, of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the rider's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark. Upon the, this is not the mark of the beast. This is the seal of God in their foreheads. Revelation 7. Upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for the abomination to be done in the midst thereof. Tim Barron's gave me a, a number yesterday. And I asked him about it. I printed it out. I don't know what I did with it. But he said, for those who say black lives matter... And they vote for Hillary Clinton, who said that Margaret Sanger was her hero, her role model, yes. who started Planned Parenthood. Listen to me. Tim gave the numbers. Over 600,000 black babies aborted. Now, I asked him about that number. And he said, I, he said, I know I read it somewhere. So I looked it up on the Internet. And I found an article by the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, that gave the statistics in 2018 over 121,000 black abortions. And the article said, Jennifer, that there were more babies, black babies aborted in New York City than were born in New York City in 2018. It's hypocritical to kill your own people and then cry that your lives matter. Hypocritical. And I say that white, black, doesn't matter. It's an abomination. And we ought to be sighing and crying for that abomination Amen. going on in our nation. Amen. Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations to be done in the midst thereof. And to the others, he said in mine hearing, go you after him through the city and smite and let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin in my sanctuary. Judgment begins at the house of God. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why I'm preaching this. Amen. It's one thing to look out and say, oh yeah, Joe Biden's bad. And uh, Barack Obama was evil. And these politicians are bad. And Antifa's evil. It's one thing to say that. But you take that finger and you point it back at yourself. Judgment begins at the house of God. <laughs> Proverbs 24. I'll close with this. Proverbs 24 verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful. And by the way, if you want to, you can look at Ezekiel 13. Ezekiel 13, God talks about the false prophets who built the walls with untempered mortar. What happens when you've got mortar that's junk? What's going to happen, Sterling? What's going to happen to that wall? You can lay all the bricks on there you want to. The bricks will only be as strong as that mortar is. And God said they built with untempered mortar. And he said it's saying things that, I, that God never said. But God, oh, God said this. God said, I never said it. 
So he said, I'm going to send an overflowing hailstorm. And the hail is going to be so big, it's going to knock that wall down. And it's going to discover the foundations of what you really are. That's Ezekiel 13. That's what I skipped. Proverbs 20, verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful. Who's reading their Bible? Who's praying? Who's daily striving against sin? Who's doing that? If you're not, you're slothful. And by the vineyard of the man, void of understanding. And remember, that's not supposed to be us. God said, blessed are your eyes because they actually see what's going on. Lo, it was all overgrown with thorns. You know what thorns are? It's a type of sin. Thorns sting. That's the sting of death. The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. So the vineyard was overgrown with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. You're supposed to look at people who play church. Whose lives are full of secret sins. They come in and act righteous. They come in and act holy. But inwardly, they're full of wickedness. And God is going to expose them one day. You mark it down. I've seen him do it in this church. Have we not? Who's next? Who's next? Who's God going to expose next? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be me? We ought to have the sight of eyes to be able to see our own lives and where we stand with God and make sure that the wall... See, you know what walls are? Salvation. Walls are protection. Walls are what God is protecting you with so that Antifa doesn't come in and destroy you. And there's Antifa devils everywhere. And you're supposed to examine your life first to make sure that the thorns are cut down, the nettles are mowed down and dug up. Get them by the roots or you ain't got them. Don't be slothful. You're supposed to look and see the evil that's going on all around us and say, I am not going to be part of that. I don't care if the world hates me. I don't care if my own people hate me. I won't be part of it. 